Hi, I'm Yasu Matsuoka. I'm a full-time freelance illustrator living in Japan, and today I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how I created this illustration. I'm going to talk about creating a concept sketch, lighting and value, blocking in colors, and everything that went into creating this piece. This is a sketch I created for Mermaid. I did all 31 days, and I'm slowly coloring each and every one of them. The problem is, I don't like this sketch. The concept was pretty bad. I mean, she's sitting on a baguette. And I think I was just pressured for time. I was really just trying to pump out all 31 illustrations. So I decided to draw it again. And during this stage, it's my concept stage. I want to explore new ideas. But I did like that she was sitting in a life preserver. So I'm going to keep what was good and get rid of what wasn't working. When I'm working on a concept sketch, I try to start from the basic shapes and then start focusing on the details. I don't draw the face till much further on. I really just want to block in uh, the basic idea and then once that idea is kind of put on the paper, then I can go in and start working out the details. And I think that's also when uh, reference material can start coming in. Once idea is kind of formulated, then, you, then I usually uh, look up reference material for areas that I'm not confident in. For example, anatomy. Anatomy is such a difficult thing that I almost always uh, look up a general pose. I ask someone to pose for me, or I just look in the mirror to make sure that uh, the anatomy is correct. There was a time when I used to think that uh, using reference was cheating and that good artists have to be able to draw everything straight from their mind. Uh, but I, I definitely don't agree with that anymore. I think the more you draw something, the more, you know, you memorize the way it looks and it kind of becomes muscle memory. My, my anatomy and figure drawing has gotten much better over the years, so I don't need to depend on reference quite as much as I used to. But for poses that I'm not familiar with, I definitely will not hesitate to look up reference because that's the key to creating good art. If you've never drawn something before, uh, no one's going to expect you to be able to draw it perfectly, right? So uh, definitely use reference. That's a big part of uh, my drawing, especially hands. <laughs> and here I'm already starting on my second sketch. Sometimes I'll do more than one concept sketch to make sure that uh, my idea is really solid. I've, I'm drawing her facing the other way just to see if something new will come or if I'll get some inspiration. In the end, I stick with my first sketch, but it was worth it at least to see another option, to see which one would be best for this illustration. And it saves time to build a solid under sketch, make sure the proportions are right, that my perspective is on point, that my silhouette reads well because it's so much easier to fix these things before I start coloring. And uh, here I'm sketching out the face one more time. It's a tricky angle, so I want to make sure that I understand the proportions and the angle of the face before I work on my clean sketch. I know there are artists that practice their drawing multiple times before they work on their final piece, so I think it's worth the time to do that if it helps create a good illustration. And one important thing I didn't mention yet is to flip your picture. This helps your eyes catch little mistakes. Maybe one of the eyes are lopsided or the nose is off center. But by flipping the sketch, you'll be able to catch a mistake before you go to the next stage of your drawing. And now on to the clean line art. It's really just about clarifying the line so that I know where to color. Some artists like to work more loose, but for me, I prefer having pretty tight line work before I start coloring. 
creating the line art is pretty straightforward, so I'm going to skip this part and show you what my finished line art looks like. Now I'm going to start blocking in the values using the lasso tool. And each new section, I'm going to create it on a new layer. This is going to help me when I'm coloring and when I'm adding some shading later on. One thing I'm thinking about when I'm blocking in these values is readability. For example, the hat is lighter than the hair, and that makes it stand out. Now, if the hat was the same color as the hair, it just wouldn't have as much impact. So keeping that in mind as I block in everything. This is a pretty simple picture. The background is very simple. There aren't so many elements, but when you're working with a more complex image with a busy background, you're really going to want to get the values right. So I've skipped ahead here and I've blocked everything in. Next, I need to decide on my lighting. This is one of the hardest parts, getting accurate lighting. If I have highlights and shadows in random areas and they don't follow the rules of lighting, then my image will look really strange. So ideally, I want to get a photo of someone who will pose with the lighting hitting them just the way I want to draw it. But if I can't find reference or find someone to pose for me, then I use something like this. It's a sphere test, and I threw this together in a 3D program called Blender. I decide on where I wanted the light, and I render the image. I can now use this as lighting reference for my image. I just need to match the surface of this ball to whatever surface I'm going to shade. For example, the surface of this part of the sphere is facing the same direction as this part of the mermaid's face, so I know that's in shadow. Um, whenever I'm in doubt, I can look at the sphere to help me get accurate lighting, and it really helps keep everything consistent. So I just continue to match the surface angles of the sphere to my drawing and repeat until everything is shaded in. I'm also thinking about cast shadows. Light travels in a straight line, so I'm mapping out where the shadows will fall into other surfaces. This takes a lot of practice, but if I place the light and shadows in the right areas, It'll bring a level of believability to my drawing. Moving on to color, finally. So here I have four color studies that I did. The reason I did four color studies is because I'm really not that good with colors. I'd say that's my weakest area. When I start coloring right away, straight onto my final piece, it just doesn't turn out well. I can render things nicely, but the colors might not harmonize as well as they could. So I need to create an experimental picture where I'm free to throw colors around and find that appealing combination. There's no judgment during this stage. It's a throwaway piece if it turns out bad. And when I create a color comp, I shrink the image down because the point of the color comp is to focus on the color, not the details. When I try to create a color comp on a full size picture, the temptation to zoom in is too great and I get carried away with the details. That defeats the whole purpose of this process. So I've shrunk the whole image down, but everything is still blocked in on separate layers, so I can easily apply colors using the clipping mask. My favorite method for applying color quickly is to use a multiply layer, overlay layer, or the color balance adjustment layer. Those are my favorite because they don't mess with the value structure I've created. And it's super fast. I usually like to throw color in the background to help me decide on what colors to use in my illustration. If it's a warm color, then it reminds me that there's a warm light and that should affect the rest of the colors that I apply. I also want to evoke a happy, warm feeling when someone looks at this picture. So that's kind of steering me in a certain direction with the colors. I love the smell of freshly baked bread. And so that's kind of the vibe I'm trying to get across. I think that emotions play a big part in choosing colors. And since I'm trying to go with something happy, all my color variations are kind of similar in that way. So by this point, I already have a general direction for this piece. It's not going to be a dark, broody piece. 
If it was, then I would let that influence my colors. Things would look darker, more gray, less vibrant all around. And I'm really glad I explored more than one option here. I like the first version, but in the end, I went with a blue tail version and changed her to a brunette. A uh, big thank you to the people on Instagram. I posted there and they helped me decide on which one to go with. So all this work, and I haven't even started on the final piece. It may seem like a waste of time, but believe me, it really pays to do this. I've worked on a number of pieces I've kept hidden away that are terrible, and that's because I didn't follow these steps. The concept was pretty good. The proportions were almost there. There was a lot of potential. I could just feel it, and I just went with it, and I fell flat on my face. The picture turned out hideous because I hadn't planned it through. If I'd spent the extra time to plan everything out, I believe those pictures would have turned out great. And you know what? I might try to salvage them sometime. But this time, following all these steps I've just gone through. Concept sketches, value studies, and color studies. So with that said, I can finally move on to the final version. I have my black and white value study pulled up. Everything is already divided on separate layers, so I can just lay in the colors that I've worked so hard to find. If I was really pressed for time to finish a piece, I'd probably just increase the size of the color study and add more detail to it. But I wouldn't be able to play with brush strokes as much. So I'm just gonna have it on the side and use it as reference. Now I really enjoy drawing from life and drawing from reference. I can switch my brain off and do it for hours. And that's pretty much what I'm doing now because I've done all the hard work. I know where the light and shadows are. I've decided on the colors. So it's just a matter of replicating the image, but with more detail. But it's not just that. One thing I didn't really explore in my color comp was how colors will bounce off of objects and will influence other nearby colors. For example, the blue of her tail would bounce up into her abdomen and give it a slightly bluish tint. The scales are also kind of reflective, so some of the white from the life preserver will show on the sides. Getting good at this kind of thing just takes a lot of practice, and I'm still learning a lot about it myself. Drawing from life is probably one of the best ways to improve. Or you just look at photos or other paintings and see um, when an object is near another object, how it picks up that color. And the more you're aware of it, the more you'll be able to put it into your art. I mentioned that this stage is pretty easy, kind of mindless, and it's like drawing from reference since I made all the hard decisions. But it can also get tedious because I still need to add so much detail. It's tricky because if I add too much detail, it can get overly rendered, which isn't a bad thing, but I prefer a more painterly style. On the other hand, if I leave things too painterly, it might look unfinished. So I like to take regular breaks to give my eyes a break. And when I come back, I can usually see if an area needs more work. Also, uh, my wife and daughter always has something to say about my art. Sometimes it's nice and sometimes not so nice, but it's always helpful. Another thing I've been doing recently is having some paintings or pieces of art that I like open nearby so that I can get inspired by the artist's techniques. For this piece, I found some pinup artwork and had it open to see how they handle lighting and colors. The last touch I usually add is some Photoshop adjustment layers, um, but only slightly. Since following these steps, creating the concept sketch values and colors, I haven't had to do it as much as before, but maybe adding a little more contrast might make it pop a little more. Then I sit on the illustration for a day or two maybe ask for some feedback from friends. This time I actually posted it on a Facebook forum for some feedback and I got some really helpful input which I incorporated uh, into the drawing later on, not in this video. 
there are so many things I think about when I'm painting, and I've tried my best to condense it all into one video. And I hope it's been a help to some of you, or at least interesting to see how I work. I hope to post more videos of my work process and maybe some technique tutorials as well. Or how to draw mermaid, because I'm obsessed with them. <laughs> if you have questions or suggestions for new videos, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give this video a like. See you later.